Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of On The Wrist From Off The Cuff. Today we're going to be talking about the very new and very cool Christopher Ward C60 uh, Pro Trident 600 meters and uh, we're going to be comparing it uh, to the very nice and uh, very reputable uh, C60 Mark 1 essentially um, so we can see some of the changes, improvements um, just a warning ahead of the time uh, we're not going to be talking about the braceleted models um, I, I've always kind of felt that um, the bracelet was kind of the weak link it's not bad it's just was never I mean equally as nice as the dial and case and I feel like uh, those are kind of a next level up uh, the bracelet was just you know uh, somewhat mediocre clasp um, you know about at par uh, the good news is is that with the new um, updates that happened there's actually a new manufacturer so um, as far as the cases go the finishing is a lot nicer we'll cover all that but there is I confirmed it with Christopher Ward himself um, around Christmas time they do plan on releasing a ratcheting clasp version so it'll have some type of quick adjust clasp um, you know uh, those have become very popular as of late so it's nice to see Christopher Ward is actually stepping it up and um, it, I'm basically holding out uh, um, for the uh, updated clasp before I review a new braceleted version uh, so let's start off with talking about um, about a little bit about the brand. So Christopher Ward, they're a London-based UK brand. Um, they do make Swiss-made watches, so the watches are made um, in Switzerland and are up to Swiss standards, which is very nice. Um, a lot of people consider them a micro brand. I think they've actually kind of ascended micro brands and are more at a boutique level. Uh, when I think micros, I think very limited numbers, um, you know, a lot more homage pieces, um, you know, um, just w without the, the type of refinements that you'll get from a Christopher Ward. Um, so I think that's where they've kind of taken it to the next level and I would really call them more of a boutique brand. I mean, they do have an in-house movement now. Um, quote unquote, <laughs> um, for their chronometer spec and a couple of other home different models that they have. So um, without further ado, let's jump into just quickly covering dive watches. So um, some, some kind of key features in design language when it comes to dive watches is you obviously want to be water resistant, uh, have a screw down crown, uh, tough, legible, have a dive bezel, you know, uh, to time your dives and some type of diver extension, um, which really wouldn't apply to this review, but uh, it's just something to keep in mind. Uh, well, the cool thing is, is I have it on a NATO, and um, and I also have the the other, my older C60 on a rubber strap, so um, kind of uh, no worries for a diver extension there. You get uh, more adjustability um, from those straps. So. Let's talk a little bit about the C60. Let's zoom out a bit here. Okay. So, let's just get this bad boy close up. This is actually the newly released um, white dial with blue bezel, which I like very much. It was actually a gift from my wife. Uh, so, brownie points to her. Uh, if I can get it maybe a little closer. Uh, cool. All right, so this is the 600 meter, um, you know, the, the updated 600 meter resistant, which is pretty crazy. They actually doubled the water resistance. Um, so it went from 300 to now 600. Uh, this is a 42 model, which for me is kind of a sweet spot. Um, it's just a little bit more of a modern size. I think, you know, there's a lot of purists that want to stay around 40. Um, but I think this watch, as you can see, will, will wears pretty nicely. I think. Um, you know, on wrist, uh, a 40 millimeter with, I mean, I have a, you know, uh, seven and a quarter inch wrist. So, you know, a 40 millimeter watch, as long as it has, you know, nice lugs on it, 
Um, it will wear really well on my wrist, but I feel uh, the difference is is that you know there's on wrist and there's on person, and when you're actually wearing a watch is is kind of where it might seem a little bit small or a little bit large when you kind of back up. I think um, maybe on wrist it might seem a little bit large, but on person. Um, so yeah, we're coining that. <laughs> on person, it actually uh, fits quite well. Um, so the retail price on these go right now is eight twenty-five to nine fifteen. Essentially, eight twenty-five for anything that's not on a bracelet. So they have you know um, premium NATO, rubber strap, and um, leather straps. Uh, I actually got this on the rubber, which was really nice. It was actually uh, nicer than my Benito Centuri, which I thought was an amazing um, rubber strap for the price. It's a nice vanilla scent and everything. It's a lot softer and more pliable. Um, it was actually so good that I didn't just throw it in a bag. I immediately put it on another uh, one of my watches to use it there. So um, it actually is a great rubber strap and, you know, when you consider how much uh, something like an isofrane or or, uh, or one of the Hirsch Premium rubber straps are, it's actually kind of a great deal um, to get a Christopher Ward rubber strap considering the quality. So uh, it's 42 millimeters in diameter as we covered. It is about 13.3 millimeters thick. Um, it's made out of 316L surgical stainless steel, so um, it's actually the marine grade stainless steel, so which is really good. Um, the crystal is 3.4 millimeters thick. It's a sapphire. It's flat. It has inner AR coating. Um, the bezel, of course, unidirectional. Um, it's actually very nice uh, zirconia ceramic insert. It has a loomed 12 o'clock pip there, as you can see, which is very nice. Uh, signed screw down crown, uh, which we'll, uh, we'll get into comparisons here after we cover kind of general specs. Uh, the case back is solid and stamped. Um, so, I kind of like to keep this where it is, but. For review's sake, let me actually wipe this guy down real quick. Um, this is actually a very nice upgrade over the um, Mark 1 C60. As you can see, the case back is pretty outstanding. It's a very nice stamped uh, case back, and we can just compare quickly. Um, you, you know, as compared to before, it was just kind of a, a thin laser etching. Um, now it's, I mean, it's it's a lot nicer, um, and you can actually see that the screw down is actually goes all the way to the edge there of the of the case versus here it stops a lot shorter. So it's uh, one very nice difference uh, thus far. So get a good look at this because I will actually be covering this up, uh, putting my. <laughs> NATO back through so um, inside of that solid case back is this if they didn't update the movement for the regular um, C60 it's actually the same movement which is it's either uh, they don't tell you which you get but it's either an SW200 TAC1 from Salida or an ETA24 TAC2 um, from the Swatch group so um, they're kind of the same thing. Uh, it's pretty much just one extra jewel. Um, Salida actually used to make, um, has been known to make ETA um, 2824s back in the day. Let's just zoom back in real quick and you can just get a, just while I'm talking here, let them get some lens time. Um, Great movement, hacking, hand windable, of course. It's pretty much the, the standard when it comes to um, any type of micro brand watch. Even some of the bigger names uh, you'll find Oris, uh, Tag Lawyer, um, Tudor, uh, you know, a number of Swatch brand groups, Mito, Certina, uh, Hamilton, they all use ETA movements. Um, so, well, let's get into, of course, 
some of the shared features is they actually have that wave uh, wave pattern dial. Um, as you can see, let me see if I can get it to get close enough without catching the reflection. You can see the wave pattern dial, very nice. Um, it's, it's carried over, as you can see. Also, in the previous model, that caught the light really well. Ooh, it's a little fingerprints there. You know what, let's do this. Um, I'm not one to <laughs> bust out the white gloves, but you know what? Uh, it, one of the things that bothers me in other watch reviews is how smudgy the watches can get when they're polished. Uh, if they, these were brushed, uh, mostly brushed cases and, and bracelets, I wouldn't have a problem with it. But since these are, um, you know, high polished at points, uh, throw on the gloves uh, and uh, add a little bit of class uh, to tonight's episode. So uh, it has the wave pattern dial. They're using C1 Super Luvanova, which is really good. Um, it's a little bit uh, wider when it's not loomed than C3. C3 is a little bit brighter, um, but can have more of kind of a greenish tint to it. Um, and then, as I said before, you know, these uh, we're, we're just kind of covering the case. Um, so some of the big differences that I feel, I mean, um, honestly, when I looked at it, I realized that they are, you know, although it's a similar design, these are actually, this is actually a brand new case. You know, I, I thought maybe it was just the finishing was different. Let me back it out and then I can bring these up. So. This is actually, you know, was a really nice case. I'd say this is more, the, the finish quality is close to something like a Mito, Hamilton, uh, Tissot, right? Which is uh, kind of a, a mid-range brand um, quality, which is really nice considering, um, you know, it's, it's a more exclusive piece. You won't see uh, one of these sitting in the mall window. Um, I actually put this on, the, on this really great, um, Hirsch uh, pure leather strap, very nice. I feel like it. it uh, we actually did an episode on on how um, straps can kind of change the whole um, feel or theme of, of a watch, and and I think it just goes together great. Um, as you can see, the previous model was a little bit more um, of a Submariner homage, um, but you know, with other you know you, you know the Bremont style hands, also you know, the uh, Omega Seamaster um, kind of style indices. Um, but one thing you'll notice, they are very white and very precise, um, but it was very thin loom that was actually applied, a thin loom layer, and most people complained. Biggest complaint about this watch is that it, it doesn't have great loom. Um, it is 300 meters water resistant, which is great, and honestly, um, price, comparable you know to to the quality of watches that you're putting it in with that's actually really good considering you know most of the other watches in that range are going to be 200 meters water resistant you know like your Certina DS action or um, you know or the Mito the Mito Ocean Star um, or the or, um, some of the Tissot so that's actually a great feature and um, it's it's a clean clean watch is you know more refined um, than kind of its its counterparts as you can see now um, what they've done at Christopher Ford is they've really really refined everything I mean everything is sharper you grab right here um, at the bezel and it just it really is just so much sharper you know it's not and I don't mean that in a bad way I mean just it's very precise I'd say that now the case finishings are a lot closer to more of um, I'd say more com comparable to maybe my my Longines um, Hydro Conquest, which is a great watch. Um, I hope to have some time to re be reviewing that soon. Um, it's kind of uh, the gold standard. That and the Oris Aquas are kind of the gold standard and um, affordable Swiss dive watches. Uh, of course, the automatics. So some of the changes, as you can see now, they did basically the baton indices. 
Now, um, instead of the circles in there kind of mixed in, uh, which I think makes the watch a little bit more vanilla, but at the same time, um, you know, nobody's comparing it to a Rolex Submariner now, right? So that's, that's kind of different. One of the things that I, I, you know, I think is a little bit useful, which is nice, is they actually, the minute track there now is just for the minutes and it doesn't have, it's not broken down, you know, um, in between there, as you can see here, which is nice because you can get really precise timing. Um, but when you're setting your watch, it, it can confuse the eye a little bit. And when you're trying to set it to a particular minute, you know, you're, there's so many lines down there. Um, it can get a little bit confusing and uh, strenuous on the eye. And I mean, I honestly thought when this watch came out that it was just, you know, the same watch with, you know, a different bezel, different indices. But I mean, everything is different. I mean, the hands, you can tell they're actually different. Um, they, um, the quality, I mean, the, the, basically the sharpness of, of this Trident, um, counterweight now on the seconds hand. Oh, you know, and also one of the cool thing on the seconds hand is now it has, it's loomed, which is great. And which you should have, especially for a 300 meter diver. And this is now in a 600 meter diver. So it makes even more sense. Um, so, you know, it kind of moved up from being, um, you know, maybe more of a Seamaster, um, comparable watch to more of a planet ocean comparable watch because now it has that double the uh, double the depth rating so I mean these are not the same hands they're the same design but I mean they're just the, pre the precision that's been added I mean everything is just finer sharper I mean I um, and, and I watched all the other reviews and I read up and honestly, I, I really didn't believe it, but I have to say, I mean, everything is just done to a higher standard, which is pretty hard to believe because this, you know, the, the Mark one, was no slouch. Um, another big change here, uh, if we can get it to focus is that crown. So now it actually is more of a toolish crown. Um, you know, maybe something similar more uh, that you would see to an uh, on Oris Aquas, um, you know, or more of a kind of a hardcore diver, which is nice. I think it kind of makes it look a little bit more modern. Uh, this design now, I think, is almost it's very close to the Tag Heuer um, Aqua Racer 500. I feel it's kind of that balance. Um, I think the Tag in the design team, it's uh, they tried a little bit too hard to be different without necessarily trying to make the watch aesthetically pleasing. They just wanted it to let not look like anything else that's out there. And I think that Christopher Ward, they've found a really great balance in design where they can make the watch, you know, it, it kind of plays off a lot of different, um, you know, different divers, very iconic designs um, from the past, but uh, um, it, it's, it still looks good and it still looks like other watches at times and in and, and places but um it's it didn't sacrifice anything you know uh which i feel the aqua racer kind of did and and just for the sake of being different hey let's do different things uh, let's make the bezel this way let's make this this way and let's make the bracelet that way um versus christopher ford really you know, they were like, well, hey, this is this looks good on that watch. It looks good on this watch, too. Um, as you can see, the bezel design is, is different now um, also, so we can compare. Um, it's actually, this was one of the nicer aluminum inserts, um, honestly, I've seen on a bezel. I mean, it's definitely nicer than your average Seiko and, and even some of the, pros, uh, the Prospects Seikos. Um, it's a very nice matte kind of satiny finish um very nicely done bezel on the on the mark 1 c60 but now as you can see it's a little bit more updated um it looks actually a lot like let's say um an or the oris aquas bezel um you know obviously the blue is a different hue but it just looks very sharp very sporty um and and i put it on this british uh gray nato it's um I think it just kind of suits the watch. It's cool because it's Christopher Ward London, and this is the British Grey. I forget how it's pronounced. I think it's. Um, you guys are gonna. You guys can correct me in the comments, and I'm sure you will. I believe it's a uh, Admiralty Grey. I don't know. Little that was embarrassing. I should have wrote that down first. Um, 
but um, it's a very nice gray. It has kind of blue tones in it, and I think it's just, it's kind of classic, something classic to put on a blue diver, and I think with the white face, it just, um, I don't know, it just really does it for me. Just really fun, um, kind of weekend, you know, summertime watch. Uh, for me I, I really like it I really enjoy it the winding I mean everything feels nicer it's I mean, even though it's the same movement I mean just the execution just feels so much nicer the way the crown screws down the clicks and the bezel I mean I, I'm, not, I'm not gonna bother doing that because you guys aren't gonna be able to, to tell anyway but it's something definitely to look for and and the things that you liked before about the c60 like you know the great you know, kind of scalloped um, you know cutouts right there with that fine brushed finish um, they're still there you know it's the things you loved about the original um, Trident you know C60 Trident um, but now it's just kind of more of it and and it's it didn't pick up too much heft I was a little bit worried that it you know it's a little bit thicker uh, in profile and everything with the 600 meters I mean I could have done I would have honestly been fine with them keeping it 300 meters but um, you know, I think it's a smart play. I think that's kind of something that the smaller brands have to do. They have to spec up their watches. I mean, you know, you can see a brand like Helsin. I mean, you can get 500 meters water resistant watch, you know, gorgeous sapphire uh, bezel insert and, and uh, you know, the whole nine yards ratcheting uh, clasp. And um, it's one of the ways that you can kind of draw people away from, you know, some of these more name brands when you realize you can get so much watch for the money now um, when you're not paying for you know the uh, the company's uh, marketing bill <laughs> so um, you know all in all I'd say amazing imp you know improvements well done Christopher Ward you know they've really stepped it up I'd say this is more akin to a Longines um, fit and finish versus um, a Tussauds which is saying a lot um, also, you know, it's very refined, very classy, but, um, you know, it has the tool specs to really back it up. Um, some of the variants, you know, they have a 38 millimeter version, which is very nice. Um, this is a 42. Um, let me just get it because we'll, we'll do the obligatory loom here in a minute and you guys can see the great comparison. Um, you can get it to focus there we go cool um, so you know they have a GMT they have a chronometer spec with in-house movement they have quartz which looks more similar to the mark 1 c60 um, you know of course you can compare it to the Steinhardt ocean one models um, those are great watches for the money kind of even better for money but they're just a little bit more you know a um, little more generic kind of uh, more homage -y. Um, less original characteristics and I think you'll see that across the board um, something else comparable is um, there's a boutique company called Torby and uh, they actually are German made excuse me they're German made watches they have the Lawless 42 which is kind of a Tudor Pelagos um, kind of homage with this little spin on it um, their own spin and it's a great looking watch um, and I think it's actually very comparable to the new um, uh, C60 600 meter um, but it's cost a lot more and um, so that's just that definitely something to think about so I mean I'd say the bottom line on this is that Christopher Ward right now in the C60 I would actually say that they're kind of the best um, micro brand you can get right now if you're looking for something Swiss made so that the disclaimer there is if you must have Swiss made and you, you're trying to get a diver and you know, you're looking for something a little bit more unique than an Oris Aquis or you know, a Certina DS Action, you know, you know all the form favorites, the Longines, uh, Hydro Conquest, um, if, uh, the Rat, even the Rado D-Star 200, gorgeous watch, ceramic bezel, you know, amazing finishing, very sim actually I'd say it's just a cut underneath Omega as far as its, its finishing goes. Um, if you're looking for something outside of the norm and to save a little bit of cash, keep a little cash in your pocket, I'd say definitely go with Christopher Ward and their new C60. So let's try this with the lights off. Alright, so as you can see, 
um, it's it's much brighter. Um, you can see that it actually the hands it's nice because now you can actually see the second hand going because it, it is loomed there the pips a lot brighter um, you know even though honestly the indices there's not much indice there they're very thin you know little batons um, so for what is there that is extremely good loom considering and you know it's it's not going to show as well on camera as it does when it's on your wrist it has a little bit more uh, wow to it um, but I think you can tell um, just comparing it to the Mark 1 C60 in the dark here that um, it's they've definitely made an improvement. I mean, are you going to really take either of these watches 300 meters, let alone 600 meters? I highly doubt it. Um, but it's, you know, it's something it's kind of uh, the currency of um, dive watches today. Um, is you know that's one of the things is you how deep can it go how bright can it shine so uh let's pop that let's get that cool all right guys well i'm gonna cut this here um this ran a little bit longer than i had hoped so if you liked the video please go ahead and click like um if you have not yet go ahead and subscribe also feel free to share this you know and comment get talk about it share it repost um you know let's get the word out we're really trying to build this channel we have a lot of great content coming um and we look forward to you know kind of snaking our way into <laughs> the back of your mind uh, we hope to kind of be uh the little devil on your shoulder so um with that being said um from average bros online magazine have a good one thanks